It's good to be here. Also, the tallest co-host we've ever had, Johnny the Bod, John Bodwell. Good morning, sir. You had your mouth full of some Tudor's biscuits and with a steak inside. There. I was, yeah, I just took a couple of bites of it. Hold Jason it up. Do was, you still have it? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. It's right here. It's uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, look at that. It is. I've taken four or five bites of it. I've had two <laughs> chocolate chip cookies. I've had half a donut that Tim brought us. Rum cake? Rob brought rum. I mean, excuse me, Matt, Matt brought rum Matt's cake. Mom. Katie Wilkes still a gotti with the uh, homemade chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, today was uh, I picked a bad day to quit eating sweets. <laughs> to quote a, uh, you know, going back to airplane. Yeah, picked a bad day to stop sniffing glue. Yes. <laughs> now, Senator Jason Barrett, our guest here on the program, who has brought with him uh, some newly created Tudor's biscuits in a variety of uh, different flavors here. Jason, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. So what what uh, different varieties did you bring with you here? So I brought four different ones. Uh, the Ron, which is our most popular. The Ron. So, the Ron, and they all have, and I'm, we can get into it if you want, but most of the Tudor's biscuits have... I don't want to say unusual names, but but names that probably don't make sense to the to the average person. So, but the Ron is sausage, egg, and cheese, um, and then there's a Mary B, which is the second most popular, which is uh, bacon, egg, and cheese. And then I brought a rocket, which is what um, uh, uh, Jonathan is eating, is a hash brown on a biscuit with uh, steak and cheese. Right, it's darn good. <laughs> and then, now, the question I have is, who is Ron? Well, so Ron was one of the very first customers at a Tudor's, and he came in every morning, and that's what he ordered. And they just said, "We're going to name this biscuit after this no guy." No way. And I so, like that. and then the fourth one I brought is the politician, which is fried bologna and egg, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Is there cheese on that one as well? Yes. Yeah. Yep. How many different varieties of biscuits are there at Tudor's? Uh, I don't. There, are, I think like fifteen or sixteen, something like that. And know. they all have names. The, or, the, they do, and okay. and one of them uh, is again. It's kind of a unique way of, of which these names came about. Um, the customers named at least one, and um, uh, it's the miner, um, and it specifically does not have egg on it because what the customer said was there are no chickens in a coal mine. So uh, that's why they call mm -hmm. it the miner. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So did you when you decided you were going to uh, bring this franchise to the area, did you have to go to extensive training and learn all these things and all the different stuff? Uh, well, I sent uh, I was able to send four employees to training and, and our general manager uh, went to training, I think, for six or eight weeks. Uh, then we were able to send uh, a few other employees, our kitchen manager, a biscuit maker, um, someone that works the front line. We were able to send them. Um, to the Daniel store, uh, which is in Raleigh County, and um, get some training there. But but most of our staff, um, you know, we did training for a few days uh, prior to opening. So um, and it's been extremely busy up there. The community has been uh, in, incredibly supportive um, and and understanding because it's it's really busy. If you drive past there, at least in the past week. Uh, the cars were wrapped around the drive through into Route 11 coming from both directions. And so, um, you know, it's it, it has slowed down a little bit uh, so mm -hmm. that anybody listening, if you're worried about the long lines, um, you know, it's 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 back to reality, I think now. Can so. you get like DoorDash delivery of tutors and all that? Stuff? We are going to do DoorDash, but but we wanted to be able to. Um, wait a few weeks so that you know it would calm down a little bit because in the beginning for those first probably 10 to 12 days it was just non-stop from open to close i mean there were there were several days that i opened the door at 5 a.m and there were 10 or 12 people standing outside <laughs> waiting for me to unlock the door so, what, what are your hours uh, monday through friday is 5 to 2 p.m uh, saturday is 6 to 2 and sunday is 7 to 2. that's a.m a.m to p.m that's right. a.m so, to p.m right Okay, and then you were telling me in a conversation we were having about supply and inventory about the unique challenges in the Eastern Panhandle of that. Yeah, and and I'm dealing with a very unique challenge today, as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, so we get our U.S. Foods order. Tudors has a contract, a national contract with U.S. Foods, uh, and they they come out of Hurricane West Virginia, which is in Putnam County, uh, west of Charleston. Nowhere close. R right. And so, you know, we get delivery two days a week. So we have to make sure that we have plenty of product on hand because it's not like I can run down to the tutors across the street or, you know, across town and, and borrow something from them the way that so many other tutors are able to do. So that's, that's a bit of a challenge. But as I was sitting outside waiting to to come into the studio, the driver called me and said, hey, um, I've been stuck on 79 for two hours behind an accident. I'm not sure when I'm going to get there today. So, oh, no. So that's the challenge we're dealing with today. So we'll we'll figure it out. But 
Is your store designed with any extra storage space to help you in so that you have room for all your inventory? So what I did when I decided to 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 embark on this project was to um, I used the prototype store from Tudors and and Matt, I'm sure you're familiar with Tudors and Geno's. Geno's Pizza is, is their version of a pizzeria that they have under the same roof. And because I already had a, an Anthony's franchise, I negotiated with, with them to be able to do that. And so they had a prototype store that, that had both restaurants under the same roof. So I took that prototype store and I just basically enlarged it a little bit uh, to provide for some storage for a very large walk-in cooler and, and walk-in freezer. Um, but with the volume that we've been doing, it's we're, we're going to run out of space yeah. fast, I think, in, in storage. But we're, um, you know, we're getting creative about you know storing things. So we're going to make it work. And your Anthony's is not yet open in that location. That's correct. We are, are moving over there this week. Uh, so the next couple of days, I'll be uh, with uh, some help uh, from some of the employees uh, at Anthony's to bring uh, the equipment, um, dry storage, all the different things, uh, some of the food, uh, obviously, but, but we'll be bringing all that over in the next day or two. And so we'll uh, very likely, our plan is to open Anthony's at the new location on Thursday. And we should probably tell everybody what the new location is and the uh, street address and what have you. That's right. It's 8625 Winchester Avenue in Inwood. Uh, it is right next, to, it is just north of Mill Creek Intermediate School. Johnny. Well, that's, uh, it's going to make it a lot easier you know, having having both the businesses in one location is a lot easier than having to run back and forth. Are you having the same problem that a lot of other businesses are having? Do you have trouble finding good employees and, and keeping good employees in this in this market? That's why he's having kids, man. <laughs> well, I've got a ways to go before they can work. Uh, but uh, to some degree, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, John, as you know, it, it's a challenge that all small business owners face. And um, you know, we're, we're a, I have some employees at Anthony's that have been with me for over a decade. And, um, you know, I think it's one of those things that if, if you're able to, to pay them a, a competitive salary and if you're able to, to treat them uh, the way that it, respectful in the way that employees, uh, I think, should be treated, I think you're able to keep them. And, um, you know, we've um, had a, a great staff at Anthony's and, and, you know, I've really been impressed with the tutor staff that we've hired. We first started um, right before we opened, we hired 32 employees. Um, as you can imagine, uh, like any uh, like anything else, they're not all going to work out. They're going to realize, well, it's maybe not what they expected, or um, you know, it just doesn't work out for whatever reason. So, uh, I've been incredibly impressed with the staff. Um, most of those 32 are still with us. We've been able to hire a couple of more. So, uh, we have uh, obviously folks that are full time, folks that are part time. So. Um, they've done a really good job this far. Well, this this next question may be a little premature, but I got to ask it anyway. Do you have plans to have you know more tutors in the region? Do you already have that set up with them? I mean, do you did you when you when you got your franchise? Did you get you know rights to the whole region, or how how does that work with tutors? Well, and that was something that I did negotiate uh, to have those rights for both both Berkeley and Jefferson counties uh, to have the first right of refusal. So, um, you know, if there were somebody that uh, that attempted to open a tutors in or or inquired about opening a tutors in berkeley jefferson county i would have to deny it first before uh was anybody listening i'm not going to deny it so um so i would have to deny it first before somebody else in either of those counties because i mean I, I live in the gallery near uh near the new target near target and everything i think right near where the new royal farms i think behind there I think Tudors would look great in that <laughs> Weiss, Weiss, Wise parking wise. lot. I, yeah. Wise, is wise. it Wise? It is Weiss. Wise. No, no, it's not wise. wise. Okay, well, it's... Harriet used to call it Weiss, but it's Wise. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's it's wise to, to call it correctly. Yes, it is. But, um, I mean, I think one would look great up there, right near my house. I yeah, mean, right. I, I, walking distance, probably. Walking distance. Sure. Yeah, wait, yeah, I mean, I would need to walk you with might all the up. extra calories. <laughs> Maybe ride a bike or something. <laughs> yes, yes. Jason, the, uh, the most impressive thing I've heard in this conversation so far has been the fact that you were able to hire 32 people hmm. when you needed to find employees. Uh, tell me what the market is like, what what kind of a, a wage. I think state minimum wage is 875 and I an hour, and I assume no one's paying 875 any longer. No one that I know. And, and if you are paying someone 875, you're not going to have them very long uh, because you know they're going to move on for, for another opportunity, as, as they should. And, um, you know, we're, we're, our wages are very competitive to what you would see uh, in the industry or, or similar industries. Um, I don't know to say specifically what I'm paying folks because that's, you know. Sure, the, I get it. Obviously, I don't, my employees probably don't want their hourly rate shared. Well, and if, if radio, you were able but, to hire 32 people in this market, then you're paying pretty well. 
Yeah, I, I think so. And and we interviewed well over a hundred, and and I was really surprised, um, um, pleasantly surprised, of the amount of people that that. Uh, have applied online or, or continue to apply online or or stop in and like I said I think we've hired two or three people this week uh, or well the end of last over the weekend and, and uh, yesterday uh, so it's going very well and you know I, I think maybe the job market um, you know for at least on the employer side I think it is getting a little easier to hire employees um, but but you have to pay them a, a competitive rate is it the type of work that kind of fits any age range if you will sure and we've hired um, uh, you know, you would think that a lot of times with that industry that you're going to hire mm -hmm. a lot of folks in in school. But but again, if you look at our hours, Monday through Friday right. is very difficult uh, for for students for high school students. So uh, we do have uh, a fair amount of high school students that work Saturdays and Sundays. We have a couple that um, you know come in in the afternoon after school to to help clean up and do dishes and those type of things. But 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 obviously, um, you know, we don't have any students that are working. Um, you know, the four to 4 a.m. is when someone first gets there and, and they leave around 2 or 3. Well, they don't leave at 2 or 3 o'clock, but employees leave at 2 or 3 o'clock. So, I, Rob, I could, I could stop in on my way here, yeah. I was going to say that it's the perfect time for Rob get, to get there. Get an hour of baking in and then uh, take off to come here. Uh, Jeff Haddix wants to know if you can get some kind of pepperoni rolls franchise in the area, too, Jason. <laughs> Uh, one thing at a time, Jeff. One thing at a time. <laughs> Sounds like it's in the Trust works. Me, We've already got him working on the next Tudors near yeah. in, uh, <laughs> in Martinsburg, yeah. near my house. Yeah, my, my plate is, is full as it is. Can you create your own sandwich with your pizza place next door? You can pull some pepperoni from there and create some kind of a Tudors pepperoni biscuit. Well, well, Tudors already has that. It's, uh, it's that, called okay. the Peppy, so there's already a... Uh, the all right. Yeah. Wow. Hey, so you're you're a senator. You've I been am. a delegate uh, for mm -hmm. many years before that, mm -hmm. and you've opened up at least three businesses here in the Eastern Panhandle. And I think your wife is already has like a doggy daycare kind of place too, right? Just and a lobbying firm. Yeah. Yeah. So, how, as a legislator, could you improve the process of opening a small business in West Virginia? That's that's a great question. I know. I ask him once in a while. Well, today, I'm glad today's the day. <laughs> um, it's volume, baby. You just sure. keep throwing them out there. One of them's sure. good. <laughs> and, and honestly, I don't deal with the state too much, and, and we deal with the state, um, or I dealt with the state in this project uh, mainly with highways and, and being able to get the entrance approved, um, and you have to get a, a bond, you know, to be able to put the entrance in, the entrance in. So there really wasn't a lot that I dealt with the state. I think dealing with the Secretary of State's office to to um, set up a business uh, uh, is fairly simple. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know that setting the accounts up for uh, to pay taxes to the state is all that difficult. Um, and, and I'm sure that people had you know different experiences than I did. And uh, a lot of it is dealing with the county. Um, and you know, I, I don't really have any complaints that you know nobody operates as fast as government never operates as fast mm -hmm. as business, and that's mm -hmm. unfortunate. Um, you know, we had more supply chain issues than we really did with um, the government holding us up. I mean, there were there were some times that that we waited a little bit, but uh, there is a lot of development and a lot of construction going on in Berkeley County, so you kind of anticipate those things. Um, but uh, and I know that the, the community was uh, obviously very anxious to get tutors, and very eager to get tutors there. So um, I know they were upset it took uh, a little longer than we would have liked. Nobody was upset, more upset than I was, I can assure you. Um, but it was, it's, you know, it was a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. um, if people weren't upset, then they did, didn't care whether, it showed, whether we opened or not. So I'm, I'm glad that people were uh, kind of honest and, and they were, uh, you know, Eager to get eager to get tutors open. So. Well, you, the, the delay probably helped build a buzz. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you hadn't had the delay, it's like okay, they're opening. Yeah. But then it's like they're opening. No, they're not open yet. But when is tutors coming? They're they're coming, and everybody's talking about it. I mean, the the buzz that was built. I mean, I saw the pictures, man. I saw the pictures of how it was outside <laughs> your restaurant. I mean, it looked like they were there to to watch the Rolling Stones. I mean, for for those of you listeners under the age of you know me, the Rolling Stones are a rock band. They're great. <laughs> Mick Jagger, Keith Richards just turned eighty today, but no, it was. Um, he was and he was at Willie Nelson's ninetieth, where he was the youngest guy on the stage. And did you see he and he and Willie Nelson have asked the, the kids of the world, please do a better job in the world, be keep the world good for them as they get older, you know, because they've got you know a lot of time left. Maybe. <laughs> Do you know, uh, Jason, is it any easier 
as a franchise, you know, when you when Rob asked the questions about dealing with the state or just opening a business, is it any easier as a franchise because it's it's something already known, it's an entity in and of itself already, as opposed to if you wanted to open Jason's restaurant that's sure. totally brand new? Well, I think when you look at, um, you know, inside the restaurant and, and recipes and getting in certain uh, kitchen procedures, you know, when you have all those already in a manual for you, uh, that makes it a lot easier. And, and our goal is to, um, you know, when you order uh, a Ron in Inwood, it should be the same one that you get in Huntington. And that's mm -hmm. really what we uh, strive to do. And right. that's why there are those kitchen manuals uh, uh, to be able to do that so that you know, there's consistency uh, across all the tutors. And why your biscuit chef had to go for eight weeks of training. So they're fresh biscuits every single morning. They're fresh. They, they make them all day. All day. And, and they make them in very small batches so mm -hmm. that, um, you know, you don't, you're not getting a, if you go there right now, you're not going to get a biscuit that was made at 4 a.m. You're going to get a biscuit that was probably made 10 minutes ago. Especially if there's a line out the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just constant yeah. um, all day or all morning at least of running those biscuits um, through the the conveyor mm -hmm. oven it takes about 12 and a half to 13 minutes uh, for the for the tray to go mm -hmm. through the to complete the process through the conveyor oven um, they then go in a warmer where they're not there for two to three minutes all right most. we've talked about a lot of sandwiches mm -hmm. but when i think of biscuits biscuits and gravy you've got to have that as well right we, we do and we they make pots of gravy all morning long just there is to be honest with you there is one person in the kitchen that that is their primary responsibility is to not just do nothing but make gravy and a few other things that that's on the cooktop but, what kind of gravy uh, is a sausage gravy so just sausage there's not a chip beef or right. any others to right. go sausage gravy and yeah. biscuits yeah. it's good stuff you've been in the food business before pizza is a little bit different because it's kind of made to order at the moment mm -hmm. it's not like you pre-make 100 pizzas and wait for people to come in and order them but is there any type of relationship uh, with uh, places like the rescue mission when you have leftover inventory or leftover food that's in danger of if I don't sell it by you know, a week from now it expires. I got to get this stuff moving. Do you have any kind of relationship like that? Well, we're, we're certainly open to that, and there's not. A, you know, we do a good job of of trying not to, to throw product away, and, mm -hmm. and and that's you know the the more, for lack of a better term, the more waste you have in the restaurant. I mean, that's you know when you're in the restaurant business, you know the profit margin uh, it's small. It, it is small, yeah. and and you can't afford to th throw things away. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you have to have a fresh product, and and I will throw something away far before I'll give a product that's not fresh. And but but when you order biscuits, they're not already made up; they're they're all made to order. Now we've pre-made the biscuit, we've baked the biscuit, obviously. But as far as uh, anything else, um, you know, the, the biscuit isn't assembled and just waiting for somebody to order it. It doesn't operate that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a little more waste in Tudors than Anthony's because of what you just outlined. Um, in the biscuits, obviously, we don't we don't reuse them. We don't save them. I mean, if, if if you don't sell the biscuit that day, it's going into the trash. And so I'd certainly be open. Um, you know, if there there is a, a, a community. Um, organization that, that we could help out with that we're certainly willing to do that but but we try very hard to limit waste because that's mm -hmm. you know that's just profit that you're what little bit of profit you do make um, running a restaurant um, you can't throw it in the trash can if I'm hungry I don't mind my biscuit being eight years eight, uh, not eight, eight years, years eight, eight hours eight old. years old <laughs> eight years old's a problem <laughs> so, so you open at five so there is that story about that uh, <laughs> was, was it like a was it a Big Mac or something that was oh, like, yeah. yes, it was still, yes. was still good or something? I don't remember what the point Taste hadn't was. changed at all. <laughs> so if Rob gets there right at 5 when you open, mm -hmm. he gets fresh biscuit, and then you can be here in plenty of time for the show. Well, I was thinking I can get an hour of baking in before I... Yeah, right. Can, How many times does in. he have to show up at 5 a.m. before we get a sandwich called named... The called the, the Rob. I called the Mario instead. Well, but the remember, Mario. remember. Yes. Oh, when you get the pepperoni rolls, his, that's when you get the Mario. His text yeah. already changed him to Ron, so you already <laughs> have true. a sandwich, the Ron. <laughs> That's very true. My phone calls me Ron. That, if you get the pepperoni in there, are there any Tudor's biscuits with pepperoni? Yeah. yeah. What's it called? You just, the, peppy? the peppy. Oh, that's right. The the peppy. So, what, so yeah. what's on it? Pepperoni and still egg and cheese and other I, things too? Or I don't, maybe I don't no know, egg? I don't know that there's egg. Oh, how about okay. sweet Italian sausage? You got one See, there sausage? you go. That will be the Mario. That's the one that <laughs> I want. It is. Some peppers and onions and sweet Italian sausage. There you go. Now we got a sandwich, baby. <laughs> now we're talking. So what do you, do you have to call cor corporate, get it cleared, and... Then they, they put it in all the stores? You How know, does that they, work? They do give some flexibility to franchisees, <laughs> so I could probably make that happen. Nice. All right, ah, all right Barrett, go. let's negotiate. There you go. So You've been in a book, and, and now you're going to have your own sandwich. 
Life is, is good. good as, is as good Life as this is gets. good. Now, he hasn't signed off on this yet. It's going to take a little bit of selling. I want to see how much free advertising I can get out of this. I was just about I think you just say. got 20 minutes of <laughs> yes. it. Yes. <laughs> hey, you head to Charleston January the yeah. 6th. What are the biggest things that you have to accomplish there? Well, uh, the one thing that we always have to accomplish is passing a balanced budget. That's, mm-hmm. that's really the only thing. That but you guys haven't had trouble doing that no, since Republicans per- took over. Uh, there was a uh, 2017 uh, was a very difficult year. If you'll remember, that was the year that Governor Justice uh, was first inaugurated, right. uh, where there was, um, you know, was, the state was in a tough financial situation. The patient at, at is that, sick. Uh, He's, the patient that, is dying. dying. That's right. And uh, so, but now balancing, balancing the budget is easier from the aspect that you have money to be able, you don't have to cut things. But the other problem is when you have surplus dollars, now you have everybody coming and wanting money. Sure. And um, you know, there are valuable programs, there are, are valuable things that the government and the state should always invest in. Uh, but at the same time, you have to realize that this is money that has been collected from the taxpayer. And, and so I, you know, I serve on the finance committee, as you know, I have for a number of years. Um, and I think it's incredibly important, um, you know, to vet any type of spending, especially new spending, um, as much as we can, because again, we have to be mindful of the taxpayer. We gave the largest tax cut um, in the state's history. Uh, so those things, I, I always lean towards trying to keep the, the flatline budget, to keep it as lean as we can to operate government. Um, and, you know, when there are times that, that there's necessary spending, then you have to do it. Uh, but I think we should always be mindful of the taxpayer and try to return uh, as much of their money as we can or, or just start collecting less of it, to be honest. How much attention needs to be spent on the foster care situation in this session here, Jason? Well, uh, I mean, a lot. I and mean, We're still battling the, the issue that we've always had. It's always easy to say, let's just spend more money. Um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that splitting DHHR up into three different agencies is going to help with efficiencies, uh, not only in the foster care uh, realm, but, but uh, in all of the other aspects of of, of those three agencies. Um, it was a uh, incredibly large uh, agency uh, that I think it's about $8 billion when you factor in not only state money, but all the federal money as well. Um, so I'm, you know, I, I think that we really need to create efficiencies and, and utilize the funds and the money where we get, uh, where we need to, and not just continue to throw money at other things that that aren't maybe necessary. Jason, how long do you think that's going to take to really tell if that division of, of the, the department there is effective? Is that like a three to five year plan where you look at it five, three to five years down the road and go, yes, we can see changes? Um, I think in three years we should have okay. a pretty good idea. One of the things that, that you know, I'm optimistic that we're going to do with, with the other two agencies that we did with the facilities agency now is um, what the finance chairman and the president asked me to do was head up the subcommittee that uh, kind of reworked the budget for the facilities and so that we would break the budget down further so that it was easy for legislators and 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 kind of held the agency more accountable to where the money was going rather than just having a couple of uh, a few very large line items we were able to break that down even further uh, so that when we come back after we pass the budget and we're asking the questions of the agency who, who does the budget presentation to get a better understanding of where all these dollars are going. And then when we come back the following year and we compare budgets and we, we look at reappropriated money for money they, they may not have spent, we get a better understanding of what the needs of the uh, individual agency is. So I'm optimistic that we're going to do that for the two uh, other agencies as well. Okay. Jason, uh, one of the best uh, speeches I've ever heard anybody give, uh, the best speech I've ever heard out of Charleston, Mm -hmm. and one of the best speeches by any elected official I've ever heard uh, given was the one you gave a few years back about funding the uh, foster care Mm -hmm. program. Thank you. And I think you, I think you actually moved the needle when you gave that speech because you you changed some votes, and you brought this attention, uh, you brought attention to this issue even more so than what had been. Yeah, and I don't. I'm certainly not going to brag about changing votes, and but but I do think that um, that was able to get a conversation going. And, and I was in the minority at the time. Yes, you and were. So that was easier for me to give that speech. And I know uh, there were a couple of majority members at the time that came over after me and said, you know, thank me for saying that. That they wanted to say it, but you know, you got to be careful about that kind of thing. But you know, that's the you know was one one of the very few benefits of being in the minority is that. You can say what some other people are thinking, mm-hmm. and um, 
uh, I, 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 to be honest with you, typically when I give a speech, and I don't do it very often, there are times when um, legislators, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but there are times when if they get up every day, um, especially in the House, uh, I would always look around. When somebody gets up and speak, I would always look around to see what everyone else is doing. And the people that get up every day and speak, and you look around, nobody's listening. They're on their – because it's just, oh, this guy's – going off again i think a lot of those guys are just doing that to hear themselves well talk because they or? know there's a camera and they can mm -hmm. and i know alonzo's listening so they they look into the camera mm -hmm. and they give the speech and then they finish and they put it in their ego app and they see how many likes they can get uh, on facebook later that day uh, but so this one and, and i give three or four a year when i was in the house um and my always goal was to, to make it meaningful and, and try to make it impactful um, and I do think that, that we were able to bring light to something. And I hadn't really planned the, the night before I started to, to, to think about it. And if I give a speech, I don't really write it out. I just write some bullet points that keep me focused and, and say things in the correct order. Um, and, and that's basically what I did with that speech. And, um, you know, the, there were families that were, that were there. Um, there was a, um, I think it was a, one of the morning shows, uh, had focused on, um, the foster care situation and mm -hmm. they focused on a couple of families and you know I just thought it was important to um, remind the members um, really what we were there to do uh, and it was a crisis and it is it is still a crisis that that we have to focus on and um, you know do right by the people of West Virginia certainly our foster kids well, that was great stuff thank you and it was from the heart you could tell when you heard it Jason, thank you so much for coming in and bringing the uh, the Tudor's Biscuits. Happy to do it. Uh, best of luck to you in your adventure there. I don't thank think you. you need the luck. I think you're doing okay now. Well, it's a lot of work, so, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, uh, good to see you again. Merry Christmas to Merry you and Christmas. the family. Senator Jason Barrett.